Welcome back guys and if you think my last video was good I've got a great show for you today it's actually gonna blow my last w uh, video out of the water so you will not believe who I'm picking in this video I'll get to that in a little bit this is my second installment of NFL week 15 picks lots of info to touch up on uh, stuff that you really want to know if you're risking your hard-earned money on these games you ain't got to agree with me but you need to be in the know you owe that to yourself also be sure to fill out the poll questions on the top right of the screen they'll pop up every 10 seconds it's your chance it's your opportunity to actually have a voice I'll never silence my fans and my critics I'll never take down my comment wall like some other folks out there we know these polls in that comment section they're a chance for you to connect with me and actually be the voice of reason so don't forget to answer the poll questions I really want to hear what you have to say. And without any further ado, here's what I have to say. Let's start off with our early game slate. We're going to kick it off with the Packers and the Panthers. High drama for this one. Obviously, the big elephant in the room. We know what's happening. It looks like Rodgers is back. and He's going to give this one a go. Uh, I'll tell you what, hell of a game to come back on against these Carolina Panthers these guys are looking pretty good these guys looked great against the Vikes last week but uh, anyway let's talk about this game first off we got ourselves a one o'clock eastern kickoff this Sunday at Bank of America Stadium that's in the Queen City Charlotte North Carolina a uh, beautiful town get down there if you've never been there but uh, anyway the betting in this one opened up with the Panthers as the two-point favorites uh, thought that number was a bit low total opened at 44 and a half Thought that was a tad high, but since the markets opened this one up, I was really surprised to see where the public's fading on this one. And I'll tell you what, if you're liking the Packers, you're in a very advantageous position in this one. The public bet this one up to Packers plus three and a half, and that number's going to grow here, folks. Now, even with uh, Rodgers' triumphant return, Carolina open two, now minus three and a half. They might be laying four by the end of business today. And when it comes to the total, I did see some slight movement on that one as well. Saw a little over money coming in on that one. The total open 44 and a half, now bet up to 45 flat. Now, when it comes to an outright winner, Carolina's the $1.50 money line favorites in this matchup. And at the moment, Green Bay's taking just 28% of the public action. So like I said, look for them to catch another half a point or so real quick. And you know, no matter who's starting, Green Bay's done actually a fairly good job against the spread this year. And for Carolina to you know be taking over 70% of the money in this spot here, uh, I'd actually be very concerned for Carolina backers. Now here's three reasons, uh, reasons why I have concerns for Carolina betters in this game. Reason number one, laying the points. These guys have not done a great job covering the spread as the favorite. This Carolina team is covering just 43% of their games, laying the points, going 3-4 and four against the spread as the official Vegas favorite. Even worse, they're covering just 25% of their games as the official home favorite. So whenever these guys are laying points at Bank of America Stadium, just keep in mind they failed to cover three of four games previously in that very same spot. Now, reason number two, I have concerns for Carolina. Green Bay is real good on the road. And as a matter of fact, they're four and two against the spread away from Lambeau. And when you're covering nearly 70% of your games away from the friendly confines, you're most likely keeping them close and winning them outright. And even better than that, this Green Bay squad has garnered themselves a record of three and one ATS as the official road underdog. Give them points and they'll cover. Give them points away from home. That's a damn near stone cold lot. Now, reason number three for Carolina betters to be concerned. Well, it's number 12, the return of Aaron Rodgers. And if you're unaware of what this guy does at this time of the season, year in and year out, with absolute consistency, you obviously don't watch enough NFL. So if this really goes down, Rodgers feels good and he makes the start. This game should be very interesting. Now, scoring-wise, we've seen a ton of points in these Panther games. They're 4-0 to the over in their last four, and they're averaging 37 points a game in their last three wins. Meanwhile, very similar story when it comes to the overs on the Green Bay side. Their games went 3-0 to the over 
in their last trio as well. We should probably see some more over money coming in on the total throughout the week. As for me, though, I'm a little bit less concerned about the total and more concerned with Rodgers catching points. So all told, I'm going to make a play on the spread in this one, purchase the hook, buy it up, and take Green Bay plus four, getting the job done against the spread. Next game I have for you. Oh man, this is a doozy. Denver at Indy. 825 Eastern start at Lucas Oil Stadium on Saturday night. Keep in mind, Saturday night. Uh, Denver open three, now two and a half. Total open 41 and a half, now 41. Currently, Denver's a buck 35 to win it outright. And at the moment, Indy's taking just 35% of the current action. So look for their betters to get back half a point here very soon. Should see this one get back to three at some point today. And by the closing number, we'll probably see this one kick off between two and a half and three and a half. So uh, we're looking at about a field goal difference in this one here, guys. But when it comes to the trends, we might be getting a little more than uh, what we bargained for. And as a matter of fact, here's three reasons why the public betters should be leaning toward Indianapolis in this one. The reason number one, they're a good covering team at home. So far in the year, Indy's covered nearly 70% of their games at Lucas Oil Stadium with a 4-2 and two record against the spread at home. They've also gone 3-2 and two covering as the official home underdog. Reason number two for Indy betters, they cover against bad teams. As a matter of fact, they cover 80% of the time. Still curious as to what I'm talking about? Well, let me tell you, this Indy team has covered four of five matchups with teams winning less than 40% of their games. That's a 4-1 record ATS versus teams with a sub-400 win percentage. And reason number three to back the Colts in this one, Denver's winless against the spread on the road. 0-6 against the spread when traveling, to be exact. In addition to that, Denver's 0-3 against the spread as the official road favorite. And if that ain't enough convincing for you, just keep in mind that the Broncos against the spread are 3-10 overall, 1-6 laying the points, and 0-4 against teams uh, that are sub-400. Now, scoring-wise, no real surprises here. We've seen a good amount of unders out of both of these teams. Denver games have gone 3-1 to the under in their last four. Indy games went 4-0 to the unders in their last four themselves. They averaged just 12 points per game in the span of those four games. The public betters are leaning toward the under, and I think I might just have to agree with them. But this is a real messy game, so officially... I'm going to take a pass on the total in this matchup. I'm not going to make a play on the total. I'll probably just man up and make a little bit of a sharper play on the spread. So all told, I'm going to go ahead and buy the hook, buy it up, and take Indy plus three, getting the job done against the spread. All right, next game I have for you. It is going to be Chicago at Detroit. 4.30 Eastern start Ford Field on a Saturday night. We have two Saturday night games this week, guys. We saw Chicago take some early money in this one. Uh, they opened catching six. Now they're catching just five and a half. Total opened and remains at 44 flat. And currently the Lions are still the $2.50 favorites to win this one outright. Now when it comes to the movement on the spread, we'll probably see this one move back to the original opening number of six points. Reason why I say that, the Bears are currently taking just 32% of the money as we speak. So Bears betters can definitely look forward to catching another half a point or so if that trend continues. Now, let me explain why I think the public's backing the Detroit Lions in this one. Reason number one, laying the points. These guys have actually put up some pretty good numbers when they're favored. And as a matter of fact, these guys are covering 75% of their games as the official Vegas favorite. They've covered three or four games when laying the points on the year. And when you struggled like Detroit has in several spots this year, a 3-1 and one record ATS as the favorite is a pretty good thing. Now, reason number two for the Lions taking public money. They put away bad teams. All right. This Detroit squad is a perfect 4-0 covering the spread against teams under 400. So if this Lions team is going up against a seller dweller, odds are they're going to cover that number. And in this case here, they're 4-0 covering against teams with a sub-400 win percentage. And reason number three for you, Chicago sucks on the road. 
The Bears covered just two of six games away from Soldier Field. They're also covering just 33% of their games as the official road underdog. And depending on where you shop around at, the Bears failed to cover the spread in their first matchup with the Lions earlier in the year. Now, scoring-wise, we saw this one open up at 44. Seems a little high for a divisional rivalry here. That said, a ton of points have been scored at Ford Field this year. Actually, out of the six games played at Ford Field this season, five of those matchups went over the line. Lions games have also gone 5-1 and one to the overs in their last six games. Somewhat similar story on the other side as well for Bears games. Uh, before last week's uh, action with Cincy, Bears games went two and two of the overs in their previous four themselves. It was most likely their defense giving up a whole bunch of points, but uh, an over is an over, I guess. Uh, but all in all, I don't like giving up any points in this spot here. These guys played a pretty tight one in their first meeting. So if I had to pick a winner on the spread, I'd lean toward the Lions, but I certainly think they're going to win this one outright. So all told, I'm going to pay the very expensive price of 250 to get a little piece of that action. And all told, I like the Detroit Lions winning this one outright for some pricey money line cash. All right, I'm going to slide in my next and final game for the show. I'm talking about Houston, Jacksonville. Divisional game, big spread, big number. Not sure it will get that out of hand, but let's go ahead and dive into it. Jacksonville opened 11 now 11 and a half, total open 40, now 39. Anybody out there willing to take Jacksonville in the under? Bold play for sure. And currently when it comes to selecting a winner in this one, Jacksonville's the 6-1 to one favorite to win this one outright for some money line cash. Probably see them in a lot of money line parlays. But on a side note, this is a 1 o'clock Eastern kickoff this Sunday at Everbank Field in Florida. Now, if you like the dogs and you're leaning toward Houston in this one, I got some good news and some bad news for you. The bad news, nobody out there agrees with you. The Texans are taking just 40% of the public action. The good news is this, though. You're probably going to catch another half a point or so real soon. But uh, we're seeing the public back, the Jaguars in this one. And, uh, you know, realistically, how can you blame them? Uh, here are three reasons uh, why the Jags are taking money. Reason number one, overall ATS. The Jags are 8-5 and five against the spread overall and 3-1 and one in their last four five and two in their last seven. I think it's safe to say that as of late, these guys have been covering machines. Reason number two, they're good when giving up points. And more specifically, these guys are five and four against the spread going into games as the official Vegas favorite. In addition to that, these guys are also covering 60% of their games when laying the points at home. So one thing's for sure, if they're playing at Everbank Field and giving up points, they're really good against the number. And reason number three, Houston's cold against the spread as of late. Now, right now, Houston failed to cover their last two straight, and those failures were against San Fran and the fraudulent Tennessee Titans. Not only are they 0-2 against the spread in their last two, they failed to cover four of their last six ball games. All that in mind, can you see why the public's backing the Jags? I know I can. Now, when it comes to the scoring... Lots of unders between these two teams. I think this number can continue to move downward. I think it will. I'm expecting a lot of under money in this one, even more than we already saw. Houston Games, 3-0 to the under in their last trio. 5-1 and one to the under in their last six. Meanwhile, Jacksonville Games went 5-1 and one to the under in their last six, throwing out that Seattle game. Lots of defense out of this Jacksonville squad. I think I'm going to have to agree with the public on the line here. I really don't foresee a whole lot of points coming from the Houston side of the ball. We'll just have to hope that Jacksonville doesn't put this one over the total themselves. All said and done, though, I'm certainly going to avoid making a play on that very high number. I just don't want to lay 11 to 12 points in any divisional game, no matter how bad a team's playing. All told, though, I'm going to agree with the public betters on the total and take the under, 39 in this one. All right, folks, that is going to do it for me. Once again, be sure to fill out the poll questions on the top right of the screen in the first minute of the video. Uh, they pop up there, and uh, if you haven't already done that, go ahead and rewind, watch the first minute of the video, answer the questions, 
It's your chance to have a voice. And also, don't forget to answer the poll question in the comments section, too. That's where you can really uh, lay into me. I really want to hear what you have to say there. So, all right, folks, that is going to do it for me. I got one more installment of NFL uh, picks for week 15. That'll uh, be uh, maybe a smattering of a couple different slates, but mostly the one o'clock slate games. All right. So once again, I am not a sports betting expert, nor do I implore you to take any of my picks. A wise man once said, good ain't free and free ain't good. For some reason, you decide to use the free information on this program. You're utilizing it at your own discretion. Most importantly, if you're betting any of these games, do it safe, do it responsibly, and most important, have fun. For Brock Page Productions, I'm Brock Page, and have yourself a positive day.